What's going on guys? So you guys are in for a treat today. I am still out here at the e-trailer tow week event. They invited me out so I could take a look at some really cool products that are being showcased from the manufacturers that come out here to actually train the e-trailer employees and staff on their product. So when you call e-trailer, the folks that you talk to are highly trained in terms of the products that they sell and talk about. They are not the type of company that you call into and, and have no idea of the products, the specs, and things like that. They go through a really rigorous training for a long period of time before they're ever able to actually sit in a desk and take phone calls from customers. And they have an entire call center here just devoted to it if you didn't see the video i did out here it's kind of showcasing the whole facility the hundreds of employees that work in their call centers their experts team um, you really got to check it out because an event like this speaks volumes about what they try to do to make sure their employees are knowledgeable about the products that you all may want to purchase anyways we are going to take a look at something absolutely fantastic and that is the all new reese Goosebox gen 3 so there's a lot to dissect here. We're gonna get into this, hang tight. I'll be right back. Okay, Reese Goosebox Gen 3. What is this thing all about? What are the differences between this, the Gen 2, and the Gen 1? So the Reese Goosebox has been around for a while. This is now the third flavor of it. The first Gen 1 that came out, um, I was a big fan of. It was a collaboration I did with the folks from Reese, which is uh, owned by the company Horizon Global over there. This is one of their brands, as is several other brands like Draw Tight. But Reese produced the goose box as an alternative to a traditional pin box that you would put on a fifth wheel. Kind of like the, uh, the Sidewinder that's over there, but you know, traditional pin box in terms of having a kingpin. Now this specific setup was designed to allow you to use a goose ball in the bed of your truck as a means of towing your fifth wheel. It was the only product that Lippert approved for use on their fifth wheel to convert from a traditional pin box to a goose ball design for their frames. So. There are a lot of companies that have produced something similar since then, but Reese is still the only product that's actually approved by Lippert as an aftermarket gooseneck conversion for their frames. Now, why is that important? Because of all the brands and products that are currently out there that do this, it really takes certain criteria to be met for a product to be certified to be used on Lippert frames. Part of it was how it dampens that load, part of it was how it interacts with the frame itself, and part of it is just the fact that they don't want to run into a liability with their frame because of some, you know, remarkable new invention that some company chooses to put on the front of their RV. So they have an actual test process and they require certain certifications in terms of tow rating and, and towing capabilities to be met before they allow a product to be certified for use on their frames. There's products from Moride, from Demco, from, you know, all sorts of different companies that are currently used on Lippert frames that are approved. So it's not as if Reese was the only one that did that. Reese was just the first one to introduce a gooseneck connection that is actually certified to be used on Lippert frames without voiding your frame warranty. Now, all that said, when they came out with the second generation, that was actually, I don't want to say it was a direct collaboration, but it was certainly inspired by feedback from my channel to include certain things that were just lacking. First of all, the air valve that they had on the initial generation one goose box I'm not going to say it had problems, but it wasn't a favorite of folks who used it. It had a pressure relief valve that would sometimes get triggered when you'd hit big bumps and the airbag would compress. So they removed it. They went to an entirely different valve that was placed back here. Um, they also added a locking mechanism right here and they increased the height of the wings coming off this portion and raised it up so this could be dropped down lower in your fifth wheel, which in, in essence makes the fifth wheel nose ride a little higher. Why was that important? Because some folks were having problems with the bed rail to fifth wheel overhang clearance of the goose box whenever they would put it on their RV and it would be too low. So by adding the wings that came up, it gave them the ability to actually space that out further so you could create more of the gap that you need to safely tow a fifth wheel behind a pickup truck. Now, all that said, generation three, what's changed? So they've gone with a different airbag design or they've gone with a different airbag inside and they've moved the air valve here to the top now. So you unscrew it here and there's a Schrader valve here. I don't know how I ultimately feel about that. It's gonna be interesting to test this out and I'm already gonna have one that uh, that's gonna be sent to me so I can review it and see what I think. But I don't 
like how the air valve is right here. I know they put it directly above the airbag now, so it's actually right at the top of the airbag, and it's a simpler connection. But again, I really would have liked to see maybe the air valve be moved down here to where it can rotate or even off to the front side, somewhere in this area, so it's easier to access, easier to fill up and maintain whenever you're about to take off on a trip. They still give you the little window here on the side, so you know when you filled up your airbag enough, a little line is gonna appear right here. But the shape is also changed a little bit. So now this new goose box for Gen 3 is compatible with the new Rhino frame from Lippert. So that was a big thing, right? Their new frame was not compatible with the current generation of goose box and that really prevented a lot of people with newer RVs that use the Rhino frame from enjoying the benefits of the goose box. But this has changed now and they've included the bolt pattern and the spacing for the new Rhino frame, which is really cool. But the other thing that's uh, interesting is it no longer has that really tall set of wings coming up right here. So from a measurement perspective, it's gonna be really interesting to see how this attaches to the front of a fifth wheel and if you get the clearance you need. Now, if they've been able to do what I hope they've been able to do, it's increase the angle coming up right here so they don't need those wings sticking up. And if you insert this into you know your typical fifth wheel pin box mount, I hope that they've been able to get this angle a little bit higher. Why? Because one of the issues some folks have with the goose box is turning angle. When you turn too sharp, this part right here can get really close to the side of your bed rails and possibly hit them. But if they were able to increase the height of this, which it looks like they were able to do just from glancing at it right here, um, yeah, that would be really cool. And, and I think that that would be a huge improvement in terms of clearance whenever you're turning really sharp. So. There's some things I definitely like about it. I love the fact that it's now compatible with the uh, the Rhino frame from Lippert. But what I don't like so far, and I'm gonna have to try to figure out what it's gonna take for this to be improved, is the location of the air valve. They put it right at the top of the airbag, um, and that in itself could be a little challenging, especially if you don't have like a flexible type hose, because this comes off right here, and then underneath here you have a Schrader valve which means that you're gonna to have to hop in the bed of your truck to get this thing aired up where you need it. If I take this off, you'll see your Schrader valve right here to fill up your airbag. I know it's probably a more reliable setup because you don't have any other types of connections. It's basically a valve going straight into the top of your airbag, which is kind of convenient. But again, having to fill it up from the top isn't the most convenient. And maybe if you have to add an extension to it and have it run over here, just some way to fill it up in an easier manner if you're gonna be taking off on a trip. Because right now, I have to use the extension on my air compressor to reach the valve right here, but I don't have to actually get into the bed of my truck. If they moved the valve to say up here, it would be a lot easier to get to, and it would just make things a lot easier whenever you're filling it up so you don't have to hop in the bed. But with it being right here, it seems like you're gonna to have to get into the bed of your truck, take this off, connect to it with an angle. It's gonna to have to be a 90 degree angle right here and then fill it up and then close this back up. It's just, I feel like that could have been relocated to a better position, maybe even like in an area over here. But what are your thoughts? I am super excited to test this out. I really wanna see from a measurements perspective how it measures up to the generation two goose box and hopefully it's, uh, it gives us the clearances that we're looking for, it gives us the access we're looking for, and it performs the way that I'm hoping it will perform. But yeah, that's what it is. That is really cool though. It's really cool anytime they come out with a new generation of a product that, that you played some role in. And uh, I was a big fan of the Generation 2 Goose Box, it's what I'm currently using. Um, I don't really have a need to go to this one because the one that we have works so well, but I'm absolutely willing to install it and test it out just to kind of see how it performs, how easy it is to work with, and potentially different modifications of things that we can do to it to make it work in a manner that uh, that makes it more convenient for me as well. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, please take a moment and subscribe to the channel. Like I said, Reese is going to be sending me one of these so I can actually put it on the RV, install it, and show you guys all of it. Show you how it works, improvements, side-by-side -side comparisons, everything. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up. We'll talk to you again very soon.